Hello, hello, hello. I am live. Just want to say hi to everybody out there and welcome to our Thursday Audrey Live. Um, we're just really looking forward to doing this every Thursday, as I mentioned last week. Uh, it's just a time for us to get together, to catch up, for me to kind of give you some information of what's going on in the industry. And, um, and also perhaps from time to time that we would have some uh, guests on or information from other um, businesses from across Canada and the States that are in the creative art industry. So I'm trying to figure out here how to get a full screen. Oh, nope, that's not it. There we go. Uh, anyway, um, hello to everybody out there and I uh, hope that we get some people joining us uh, soon. Let me just see. I'm Perhaps. There we go. Ah, good morning, Donna. Good. It is working. I was wondering there whether I had done it uh, right there or not. So, um, yes, good morning to everybody from the West Coast and good afternoon for everybody on the East Coast and, uh, and everybody else in between our wonderful countries here. So, um, just wanted to make sure when you post there, uh, let me know where you're from. It's just kind of nice to know uh, where everybody's from and uh, get an idea as we go along here what other people are doing to uh, keep busy and keep creative at this time. So I'm just going to kind of do it, give you a little update. I know last week I talked about um, the uh, crafts kits that I was doing in the community here. And it's been going over really well. We're up to about 30 or 35 kits uh, per week for the kids in the uh, community. And um, a couple of the ones that I had done, I think that I had showed you uh, were the rock. We had done a, a little pet rock kind of thing one week. Uh, last week they did these bags. I have the whole planet in my hand. And we also have like a scra scavenger hunt type thing that they did for uh, Earth Week as well around the community. And this week we have our yarn buddies, which I think I showed you last week. Uh, and they have been a real hit as well um, with the children of the community. My granddaughter loves to play with these, Daphne, all the time. So that's kind of neat. Um, and if any of these ones that you kind of want a, a pattern, I mean, there's not really a pattern instructions kind of thing uh, for you to share with your children or grandchildren. Just let me know. Uh, next week I have the kits made up already and they're just going to be doing a little um, kind of for Mother's Day, I'm thinking. I kind of put a little suggestion in for the kids that they could do something for Mother's Day. So that was one of the ideas there that uh, they have little foamies here that they can put on with the, their name or their mom's name. So we gave them some letters and gave them uh, different foam ideas. I'm also going to give them or I've given them um, just a word uh, as well, a couple of words on a sheet so that if they want, they can just color the the word, an inspirational word, love or mom, or and uh, put that in the frame instead of a picture if they can't print out the picture. Um, and then the following week, we're also going to be working on, or in a couple of weeks from now, uh, some kindness rocks. We're going to start a kindness program in the neighborhood. Um, so I'm going to give them some ideas and some paint, of course. And uh, by now, I think they all have a couple brushes because I've included uh, some brushes with their kits. So um, kindness rocks. So if you have any ideas of simple painting, these ones, I just kind of did dots and flowers. And um, this one here, I just kind of did love and some hearts. So right now we're getting kids anywhere from the ages of, say, three to the ages of 12. Uh, so it's kind of been really nice to see, but also, you know, thinking of what, what I'm going to do uh, in the upcoming weeks, sometimes is difficult as well, because you're not quite sure um, of the ages and make sure that the craft as well. So, um, so yeah, if you have any ideas, suggestions, 
Uh, another thing that I have a lot of here that I'm trying to find something to do are these wood boards. I bought a bunch of them at one time at Dollarama uh, when we were doing a lot of, um, of the trade shows ourselves, uh, promoting the, the Pennant Canada and Art Wave shows. So we were doing make and takes and I was just kind of doing a full finish and then they were writing a word or stamping or that sort of thing. So I'm trying to think of something neat, springish to do on this wood board. So all you creatives out there, maybe you can help me and think about it. Uh, hi, Barry from Vancouver Island. Nice to see you. Hi, Carol from Edmonton. Debbie Pollard, I know you're right here in London. So nice to see you as well. Nancy Redford. Okay, where are you from? I'm trying to remember where you're from. So, but um, yeah, so if anybody thinks of ideas, I know I was thinking of, and I don't know whether you can do it or not, that you can get some spring flowers or spring leaves and possibly decoupage them on here. Oh, Grand Forks, BC. Thank you, Nancy. Um, so yeah, so that was one idea I had. Hi, Christine, Kristen, hi, Joy. So um, yeah, if you think of any ideas for the board, let me know. Um, one thing I just wanted to share with you, which was really um, a tearful moment for me, uh, somebody in the community has a friend that works at uh, one of the newspapers and heard of what I was doing and uh, they actually did an article for me on me on the paper. OMA, which is what they all call me, uh, offers learn from home diversions for the kids in her community. So it's a, it's a really nice, well-written article. And I was, um, yeah, I was very floored. Uh, about it, that that it were, these kits were meaning so much to to the kids and the community and the parents. So that was really nice. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Uh, so yeah, so that was really kind of a, a neat little give back, I guess, and just for people to know to be creative and some ideas of what they could do. So um, oh, another thing that I uh, handed out to the kids, somebody in the community, uh, the community has been great. They've been donating um different supplies for me to be using or things that you know calling and say well i've got a bunch of crayons can you use them or i've got a bunch of yarn i can help you with that so that's been really positive as well um but i had seen i think it was holly hanley or i'm not sure who it was posted about this the time capsule the COVID 19 time capsule which you can find online and i can put the link uh, afterwards in here as well and so somebody had donated journals. So I thought, oh, wouldn't that be great for the kids to take some of the ideas from the COVID-19 time capsule and make a journal? So I gave them the link as well for the time capsule, but also I just printed out a bunch of ideas of what they could put in it. So, and what's really neat, I did a little bit of research on it, and uh, this time capsule was actually created by Natalie Long, and she's from Medicine Hat, Alberta. Yes, Debbie Vice from Dorchester, <laughs> perfect. Um, yeah, Natalie Long from Medicine Hat, Alberta, and it's called Long Creations is her business name. And she created the Time Capsule Workbook to remember this time in history, which is kind of, you know, at some point in time, we're gonna look back and think, wow, this was, this was a very important uh, time in our history and history of our children and our grandchildren. So uh, she originally made it, it's a 10 page book and she made it for her children. Uh, and after sharing it online, thousands and thousands of people um, uh, have wanted to, to get it as well. So she uh, made it downloadable and it's also in English, it's in French, it's in Spanish. Um, she has a special one for pregnant mothers. She has bonus pages for graduates, for birthdays, for new babies, and more. So um, it really is something great that you can do and look at it, you know, 10 years from now, 15, 20 years from now, to get an idea of, um, you know, to share all the moments, uh, good and bad from this time. So more good. I think it's we should be putting more good in it. So, uh, so yeah, I wanted to share that with you. So um, also a few other I, uh, things that have come across uh, my desk or computer in the last week or so that I wanted to share was um, uh, Tracy Morrow from Fredericton, New Brunswick, who has also been with us 
forever. We've been doing these shows now, I think, for 24 years. And she's been with us, I think, for about 22 or 23 of them. So uh, she's been a, a great um, supporter of all of our shows. And we just always love seeing her and having her and miss her. So uh, right now, as we do everybody. So anyway, she did these uh, acts of kindness for essential services pins. So I'm sure many of you have seen it on Facebook. She had it on her uh, Facebook as well. And um, just kind of a, a really nice give back. It's in recognition of essential services um, and to, to wear them uh, in support. So um, I know myself, I looked and looked and believe a lot, I could not find any hearts wooden hearts around here. I have a lot of wooden pieces that I've gotten from Stockade because we did a lot of uh, name badges and things like that over the years. So I'm definitely going to have to put a uh, order into Stockade for these um, uh, these heart wooden hearts. Uh, and then they also have pins that you can order at Stockade. Um, Tracy also put here that you can order, I think, the hearts from Art Mines. Um, but I know Stockade for me, it's right here in Guelph, so I will probably uh, put my order in there. So, um, but anyway, that's a really great uh, give back. It's in recognition of essential services. Uh, Tracy says, during this time of uncertainty and fear, there are those within our community that provide us with the essentials of everyday living while placing themselves at the greater risk, which many of you do as well. Uh, wear the small blue heart to acknowledge their efforts and sacrifice. It's this quiet way of saying thank you. So that is, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty neat and a good way of giving back as well. So um, also a few other things that I've kind of seen as talking about the journals, it would be kind of neat to get a journal. And I saw Jill Fitzhenry, who's from Savage, Minnesota. She had a really neat um uh, video on Facebook as well uh, of amazing journals. And I believe it's feathers and stuff like that she had on. It was like a mixed media. And I thought that would be really kind of neat uh, to have on your journal. Also, many of the designers um, that we have at many of our shows have um, put out patterns that say hope. So I'm pretty sure you've seen many of them. Um, I will write a list because off the top of my head, I can't remember. And I know I saw Tracy had one. I think uh, Deb Antonick had one. Um, I think Jill had one. I think Anna Marie had one and probably Holly. I'm sure I'm missing somebody there. So I'll, I'll kind of put a list up for you. Um, and oh, Carol. Yes. So anybody on the East Coast, Carol, or sorry, the West Coast, Carol, who's just north of Edmonton, uh, Paint for Joy, she has the hearts as well. And she'd be happy to ship them to you. So definitely uh, give her a call or possibly can they call you, Carol, or put it on um, or order it online. Let me know, Carol, because I'll make sure I put that on there. Hi, Ben. Hola. And Sue. Hi, Sue. So, uh, yeah, so you can order them from so anyone out west. You can order them from Carol, Paint for Joy, East. Uh, this way, I know, like I said, um, Stockade carries them. So if you know of any place else, please let me know because then people can order them from somebody that's close to them as well. So to support all our local uh, creative businesses. So uh, yeah, so Jill, check her Facebook page out. She had a really neat journal. And then, like I said, I'll put a list out uh, on my Facebook as well of a lot of the other ones that have uh, done designs with hope. So if you want to put, you know, something else on it. Um I also saw Deb Antonick out in Penticton, BC. She was doing a COVID journal as well, and she's been working on it and sharing a lot of the pages in that. So uh, that's kind of, uh, there's some great ideas that Deb has and uh, really um, just inspirational. So something you definitely should take a look at Deb Antonick's Facebook page and get some ideas there. She's also, I believe I saw her, she had some rock painting. Is that right, Deb? Are you on, Deb? Oh, Carol says email her at info at paint for, the number four, joy.com. And she will get uh, the order out to you. So you can send her an email. Again, it's Carol Maxwell at info at paint for joy.com. Um, so, um, 
yeah, she had some rock painting, I believe it was, Deb Antonick. And uh, that it was a great family project, I thought, for the kids to do. And she made, yes, that's right, she made a bunch of flowers and little bugs and stuff and adhered them to a piece of wood. And I thought that was really a neat idea. So you have, you know, uh, you can do it whatever size you want. I'm not quite sure how she adhered them. So Deb Antonick, if you're here, you can let me know how you adhered them to the piece of wood. Um, I know you probably use some sort of uh, special um, glue and depending on whether you have it indoors or outdoors, what type of glue you would use. Um, oh, Jill, Debbie's, thank you. Jill Fitzhendry started the challenge for the Hope Flowers. Well, thank you. I did not know that that was Jill, that's awesome. Uh, she has a short video on her Facebook page and Tracy Moore also has a Facebook page called Random Acts of Kindness all year long. Yes, thank you. I forgot to mention that, that she uh, certainly does that all year long, different um, uh, random acts of kindness. Tracy Morrow and Jill started the Hope Flower. So if anyone knows of other people that have done. So Jill, if you're on or maybe Debbie, you know of other people who have taken that challenge from Jill and uh, done other artwork with the Hope Flowers. That would be awesome to put on the cover of a journal. Um, so yeah, so Deb Antonick, the flowers. I also saw somewhere that someone did a flower garden, a rock flower garden. So they literally made, painted the rocks. So say you had like five rocks and you paint them all yellow. And then you put like a blue one, one rock in the middle. So then put it in your gardens. And that was just like, it seems so simple, but it just looked really uh, incredible. So I thought that would be a neat idea. And uh, Deb also said, Antonic, that the Mandela rock patterns that are in some of our patterns are, uh, and colors are on the deco art um, page or um, website. So you can go to deco art for that as well, or go to Deb Antonic. Um, oh, another thing that I saw this week that I'd like to share is Tammy Jackson. She's out in Summerland, BC. Love her studio out there. Uh, Tammy uh, has been uh, a great supporter of our shows as well and uh, taught out in BC and Calgary and she comes to the London show. Anyway, she did a um, free giveaway days, she called it, and she had people drop off uh, food uh, for the food bank and um, also some uh, donated money as well. So she said she wanted to thank everybody for their generosity and support that the donations that came in to support the Summerland Food Bank. Uh, they also raised $368 uh, in a couple of bins of food as uh, she spent the last couple of days in her store reflecting on all the amazing people that have come through those doors and how blessed her life is. Uh, and thanking everybody for their support. And I believe so many of us are trying to, to do that sort of thing and give back. So thank you to everybody else uh, as well that um, have done these sorts of things, helped out in their communities, helped their neighbors, helped the food banks. Um, it's just a time when we all really need to work together. That's for sure. Um, I wanted to, uh, oh yeah. Artways West catalogs, for those who have been asking, the Artways West show, uh, we've been in contact with the college and with the um, hotel out there, and they're all feeling extremely positive that we have five months before the show, um, that things should be back to normal uh, at that point in time, or whatever the new normal is, I guess. Um, you know, there might be some things that we might have to look at, uh, possibly limited class sizes or things like that, or just making sure we have a little more space in between people. I'm not sure how the whole social distancing thing is going to uh, go as we go along. So um, that's the only thing that we'll have to keep an eye for. So um, so the catalogs are out. We mailed the catalogs out and we have a catalog and we had the one hour workshop pamphlets. So um, a bunch got mailed out the end of last week and the last uh, group got mailed out this week. Um, all those from the U.S. that have been asking, yes, yours got mailed out as well. So hopefully, I mean, they might take a little bit more time. I've heard that the whole postal system is a little bit slower now. So, but, uh, but hopefully you'll get yours as well. So, um, yeah, so that I just want to let everybody know about that. Uh, and speaking about the West Coast, 
Um, I had a group uh, that maybe some of you know who go to the Art Waves, Art Waves West show in Olds, Alberta. We have a group that of uh, high school students that come out and help us, they volunteer. They're part of a leadership program that they have out there uh, in Alberta. And I saw a story about um, a group in Calgary. They're part of the Calgary Board of Education and it's called joyforall.ca. So joy and then for all.ca. And it's a group of recreational leadership students so there's students that go to um, high schools in the Calgary Board of Education. And basically what they do, they're a, a, a large part of their course is giving back to the community. So um, they actually uh, made up a website, joyforall.ca. And uh, what it is, is um, it's to help make your community a safer and better place. Their goal is to keep everyone engaged and happy during these tough times, especially difficult for seniors and folks experiencing isolation. So uh, what they have done is you can call in, they have a dial in number on there and uh, they have all different pre-recorded options for you. Uh, they have stories you can listen to, messages, jokes, and uh, many other things uh, that they have. Um, they're just, you know, some people just might need that pickup or they just ne might need to laugh. And uh, it is kind of neat um, to go on and give a call and uh, and go on their website and give them support. Because I know these are, you know, these students as well are, are having uh, their own difficult times at this time. And yeah, Carol says that the kids last year, they were awesome. They were so helpful. They helped with the classrooms. They helped with the students. Uh, they helped in the trade show with the teardown. And they were just very positive and uh, a great group of kids to have around for sure. So, oh, Art, did you see the Art? Did you get your catalog, Carol? Or is that from online? Yeah, it's a great, some great classes for Artways West. And uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to that show. Um, in regards to the London show, uh, we have not heard back from the college yet of when they're going to open. So at this point in time, they are closed till the end of July. So um, we haven't, you know, made any official announcement or official decision, but um, to we, we've kind of done a poll within our our uh, our vendors and our teachers and that sort of thing, and many of them are feeling that August uh, this year probably be able to. Um, just people won't be ready, you know? And I think that's how a lot of us are feeling that uh, just possibly won't be ready. So we are looking right now at 2021 dates for London. And uh, believe it or not, it's very difficult because a lot of conventions that were in May and June made the decision earlier on and just canceled. Um, and uh, so there's not a lot of dates available, even though, you know, we have requested our dates early in advance, but we were in the process of uh, choosing dates for 2021. So hopefully we'll have that for you very soon. But uh, while we're waiting for all that, our big announcement today is that we will be doing a Pin It Canada virtual live event. Coming soon and it's going to be exciting. We are so looking forward to this. Uh, it's it's I, I don't want to give you too many details yet because we're working on a lot of things. But, you know, at this point in time, uh, you can't come to us. We, we can't do the show. Everybody needs to self-isolate. Everybody needs to stay home. So we're coming to you, to you, to your house. So it will be part of a Facebook Live and we'll have all sorts of um, special treats for you and guests. And uh, you'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it is going to be awesome, Kristen. We are so excited about it and um, uh, working hard to make sure that we bring you a great uh, list and uh, of uh, different presenters. And, and yeah, I don't want to get into too much detail. So just a little a little tidbit of information for you there. And it's uh, will be either, it'll be on the dates where Pinnock Canada was supposed to be. So either on the Friday or the Saturday or possibly both, just depending on, you know, what we decide. But so 
kind of keep those dates available, which I believe were June 12th and 13th, the Friday and the Saturday. So, uh, so, and it'll be, anybody can see it, you know, whether you're on the East Coast, the West Coast, in the middle, Canada, US, or around the world. So it'll be global. And uh, it's just very exciting, very, very exciting um, to do this sort of thing. We've been thinking about it now for about a month or so. It's something we wanted to do and finally, uh, yeah, come up with some plans and working on the whole process. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically uh, our news for today. And every week I'll give you a little more updates, a little bit more tidbits of information of what's going to happen there. So anyway, um, did anybody come up any ideas for this piece of wood? I didn't see any ideas of what I can do with this with kids that are from four year old to about a 12 year old. Any ideas? That's and it's got to be fairly simple, right? Like we're doing a lot of crafts that are fairly simple and easy to do. So um, yeah, keep sending me messages. Uh, so great to see so many people on here today and that we can see each other um, at least live online. And uh, yeah, looking forward to doing this every week, uh, starting at one o'clock. And I think I have gone over everything that I wanted to, uh, for my information here. So yeah, I guess that's it for now. I just want to say, you know, we have to see things in a new way. There's going to be, oh, garden markers. Ah, how about the stone flowers like Debbie? Yes. Oh, Debbie James, of course. I just mentioned that. How did I not think of that? Garden markers, that's a great idea too. Hmm. All right. Good, good, good. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Um, and keep in mind that I have to, I, when I give them a kit, everything in that kit is what they do, or they, they there's going to be everything in the kit that they need to finish the project. So I give them the paint, I give them the brushes, I give them the, uh, a pattern or instructions of how to do it. So it's got to be something that uh, they, I can put in a bag <laughs> and give to them. A B crossing sign for the garden. Oh, yeah, Debbie, that sounds good too. If you have an, uh, a pattern for that, or if you have a picture and a doorknob hole. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. But then we'd have to cut a hole in it. Or maybe they could, we could put a piece of twine. They could glue a piece of twine on there. That would work too. Paint something on there, their name. And maybe we could work with the decoupage so that they could they put a couple of flowers or something on there. Or like, I really was thinking, cause there's so many beautiful spring flowers out right now. And a lot of them are, some of them are starting to die off and end up on the ground that they can take them and put them on there. So um, yeah, anyway. So as I say, our, our old normal gives way to a new normal. And, uh, you know, we will stay connected. We will work together. And uh, let's just support all the creative art uh, businesses and designers that we know of as much as we possibly can. If you're going to order something, you know, order something from, from um, somebody that's either local to you or that, uh, you know, that's been in the industry that, you know, geez, you know, I, I want to support them because they're always giving back. Um, so take care of yourself and each other. And until we see each other again, take care. Thank you from Audrey Live. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.